Welcome back to what the YouTube comments have deemed is an epic waste of time. Well, I'm going to waste some more time. The painting gnomes came in, painted up on our structure, so now we're going to swap over to subframe so we can get our drivetrain back in our 2004 Grand Am GT. Let's get started. We'll start by throwing our hood back together after the painting gnome edged out the inside of it. Um, sorry, this isn't the Ram Air hood. It uh, makes no sense to spend the extra money because I'm going to get no extra money out of the sale of the car, even though it might look better. So we're going to put the old hood on, just throw the hood insulation and the bumpers on it. And then we're off to take our radiator and cooling fan and condenser assembly out of our subframe. We're going to disconnect our radiator hoses. Spring clamps. Yay. Some of those won't be making it back on. We can disconnect our pressure switch for our AC and disconnect our AC lines from the compressor. And we got a wiring harness that goes to our cooling fans and to that AC switch. So we'll unclip that from the cooling fan. That'll stay with the engine. Now we have to unbolt our trans cooler line from the trans. Just one 10 millimeter nut in the center and both transcoder lines pop off of there. Little wiggle and pull. Try not to make a mess. Put the nut back on there so we don't lose it. And our cooling assembly is ready to set off to the side. So the battery light was on after I put our new alternator in, our used alternator. And I trust Scott's Grand Am Emporium because he tests all of his parts before he sells them. So I was sure it was working. Now. Usually what happens is they blow this fusible link in here, but I think uh, we have a different problem. Since this is all taped up and not connected to the starter and I have no idea why, uh, other than somebody's been here before. So we're gonna hook this back up. That should take care of our charging problem. Uh, first, we should probably check and make sure this is actually not burned up in here. Our jumper pack is hooked up. It's grounded to the engine, and the other side is on the power to the alternator. It comes down here, and as long as this lights up, which is this is grounded to the block, we have a complete circuit. So why they had this taped up, I don't know. We have a new starter. I originally thought maybe they had an extra alternator or a fancy alternator in here and they took it off when they totaled the car because they wanted to keep it. But I'm starting to think maybe they put a starter on this thing and had an extra wire and then had charging system problems. I don't know. It's anyone's guess. But I'm going to hook this back up and hopefully that takes care of all of our charging and starting issues. We have to change the ground wire because they cut this one off to put this ridiculous cable on here. So we're going to get rid of this. We'll put the OEM one back on here, put it all back the way it was before somebody had been here. So we'll take the nut off our main power lug for the starter, get that battery cable out of there. Then we'll put our homeless wire back in its home, and then we'll put the battery cable back on over it. If you want the battery cable on the outside because it's got a flat spot on the bottom that locks on the starter, so when you tighten it up it won't twist. If the other wire is on top, when you tighten it up, it'll kind of twist around. So we'll check and make sure all the rest of our terminals are tight. And we can drop our center support in for our hood latch. We'll start the bolts on the upper tie bar. And we'll do our best not to lose the nuts down in Narnia in the reinforcement. And we'll tighten everything up. Now if you notice, the brake lines were a little bit rusty. Some people were concerned about that. And they probably would have lasted a couple more years. But since we have everything apart, I figure I might as well change them. I bought a set of pre-bent brake lines, so we're going to change those. It's easier just to change the brake lines when they're on the floor, but they run with the fuel lines. So we're going to take the fuel lines and everything out together, and then take it out of the brackets on the floor. So right now, I'm just taking the fuel lines out. Pull the vapor canister and vent valve out, and then we can just disconnect our fuel lines from our fuel pump. We can start on bolting all of our brackets for our fuel and brake lines. They run along the outside of the rocker here. 
and along the inside of the rail here. And we decided to put one rivet in there just to complicate things. So we'll knock the head off that. We'll unbolt our master cylinder. There is one bracket for the wiring harness. And then we can pull the two nuts off for our master cylinder. Slide that off. And all of our lines should be ready to come out. Help, help, help. You need a brake line gnome. There we go. So he's going to hold the other end so I don't turn these things into a pretzel. I do need to use the fuel lines and I don't want the brake lines to be too mangled since I have to compare the old ones to the new ones to get them in the right spot. So we'll fish them out of there. I'm going to go up around the emergency brake cable. So just slide them out. And we'll go set them on the floor and start switching everything over. We'll start by disconnecting them from the ABS module. We'll throw our line wrench on the lines. We'll use our other open-ended hammer to knock them loose. Otherwise you're trying to twist them around. Just kind of bump them loose and break that rust out of there. Then we can take it out with our open-ended hammer the rest of the way. I only bought the set for the rear. I want to say they were like 50 bucks. Uh, it was just the two lines. The Front lines, Scott's Grand Am Emporium had in stock from a car that was parted out 20 years ago with like 2,000 miles on it. So I'm just going to use those for the front four brake lines. They're just as clean as the brand new brake lines. We'll set our new brake lines in place, snap them all in, put the next brake line in there and snap that in all of our clips. And now we'll Put our used set of brake lines in there. This is all four for the front. And we used a new master cylinder. Not that there was anything wrong with the old one, but since it's a part, I have a brand new one. and I don't use these very often. I figured I might as well use it. So I'm going to throw it in there. And now our brake line assembly is ready to go back in. So we got our brake line gnome over here to help us again. And we're going to weasel this thing in there over the cable, under the exhaust, around the heat shield, back into the Grand Am we go. And start bolting our brackets back up there and send the gnome back to his tree or garden, wherever he lives. Put our master cylinder back up and tighten it down. Put our little bracket on for our wiring harness. Now we can start reconnecting all of our fuel lines. Just snap in, put the safeties down and clip them on. And slide our vapor canister in there. Got a tab on one side that slides in. And if we can find it. Come on, you got no excuses. You've done this a million times. All right, there we go. Put our one bolt in the back. Bolt in our vent valve and plug everything in. Now that all our lines are done, we can start swapping over our subframe. But we need to take our suspension off of it. We'll unbolt our sway bar links, which surprisingly came apart without breaking. They're a little rusty, but they still came apart. Not common in Northern Illinois. Let's, uh, twist a little bushing out of here, it's stuck on the rust. And unbolt our power steering cooler line. And now that the sway bar moves, we can lift it up so we can get to the bolts for our rack and pinion. At least the one on the driver's side. One on the passenger side doesn't matter. We can get that even without moving the sway bar. So we'll loosen that one up. And we'll probably drop the nut down in the subframe because that's usually what I do. Make my job difficult, but of course, since I didn't care, it didn't fall in. Push the bolt out of there. We'll just use the ratcheting pry bar to pry the bolt the rest of the way out. There we go. Now we'll disconnect our ABS wires from the hub and then disconnect the wiring harness from our control arm. 
that harness is going to stay with our engine. Do the same thing on the driver's side. Now we're going to unbolt our control arms from our subframe. The rear bolts are already unbolted. They're the subframe bolts as well. We just have the ones in the front. So not in a bolt. We'll spin those out of there. Now we're going to pop our drive axles out of our transmission. And at this point, the only thing holding our suspension in is the tie rod ends, which are not friendly to take apart. So rather than struggle with them, we're just going to leave them together and hang our struts from our multi-purpose frame rack that has now been converted to a lifting device with forks. I'm sure that one of the experts will tell me that they have a name for that. I don't know what it is. It's just a multi-purpose frame rack. And if you're thinking to yourself, that's really not worth the struggle, you've apparently never tried to take the tie rod ends off of a Grand Am after they've rusted up a little bit. It's really kind of a pain. It's all right when they're in the car and you got something to pry on, you can usually get them off of there. But, you know, the suspension's kind of not in the car anymore. So we started lifting our engine, but it wants to rock back. So we're going to throw yet one more ratchet strap because I think I still had one left. And we'll lift up the back of the engine so it goes up level. I think I didn't need any more. I was out of ratchet straps. So now we can lift our engine and trans off of there if we will get this wire out of our way. A little plastic clip is pretty tough. We all our old subframe out of there. And we'll have our subframe gnome give us a hand. Set our new subframe up there with just the right amount of rust to fit with the rest of the car. Put in our brake line. It's our new one from Scott's Grand Am Emporium. We'll clip it in. A little difficult to get in there when the engine's in the way. So now we can set our engine down into our new subframe. We're just gonna line up the transmission mount. We'll bolt it in later. Get our rack and pinion lined up. And then we'll start lining up our suspension. Once we get the suspension in on both sides, we can let the engine all the way down and put a little weight on the cart so that we aren't chasing it around. It moves a little less when there's some weight on it. So that's what we're going to do. Make sure everything is lined up. We're not pinching anything. And now we can bolt our control arms in. Bolt the other side in. bolt our rack and pinion in. We'll do this before the sway bar. And tighten up the other side of the rack and pinion. You manage not to lose that nut down in the subframe. Way to go. Tighten up our power steering cooler. Now we can start putting our ABS wires back in our hub and clipping them into the control arm. I just used the sway bar that came with the used subframe rather than taking it off and messing with the bushings. It's like two extra nuts and bolts. Put in our wiring harness on the other side. And our drivetrain is ready to go into the car. So we'll let it down slowly. Hopefully we don't smash anything. But if we do, I know a guy that's got a few extra parts for these things. That doesn't mean I want to have to replace them. We'll just take our time. Wires do like to get pinched where they don't belong. We'll line up our struts. And we can start bolting our struts in. Click. And now we can start bolting our subframe up. Rear subframe bolts go through the control arms, hold everything together. 
The fronts just hold the subframe up. We're ready to lift it off and hopefully the engine and trans goes wet. It did. Hey, I got something right. We'll bolt our brake line in. Tighten it up. That's the brake line that runs across the subframe that we changed with the subframe. And we'll bolt that one in on the driver's side. The frame rail is all painted up. Click. And we'll tighten up the brake hose. Click. Now we can put our steering shaft back on. So we'll slide the shaft down, put our bolt in it, and tighten it up. And then we can pull the boot down around there and flip it in, keep all the dirt out of there. Put our bolts in the back of our subframe. And we can tighten up our trans mount that we left loose until now because it's much easier to do it when the thing is up above us. And tighten up our power steering cooler line. And we can bolt our exhaust back up to the manifold. Just two nuts. And put our AC line back on. Our accumulator. We did put some new ceiling washers in there. Bring that down. Manufacturer specs. And we can put our engine mount in. it down on our rail. We'll tighten it up to the engine. It'll pull the engine up. Tighten a little bracket on the top. And we can bolt it down to the frame rail. Now we can take the little block of wood that was holding our engine up out. We'll go over to the driver's side. We'll plug in our fuel lines. And we'll put the little safeties on. So they don't come flying off of there. Sort our wiring harness out. Stuff this back into the cowl. And plug in our PCM. Somewhere along the line we are going to have to bleed the brakes. So I did fill up the brake fluid. And we'll top off the trans fluid. I'm not going to bore you with all that. But I did do it, otherwise it wouldn't stop, or go, for that matter. We'll continue stuffing our wires back here in the cowl. Flip them into our bracket that we bolted onto our master cylinder. Plug in our master cylinder. We can snap our shift cable down. Flip it into its little bracket. After we put it back in park. Snap the safety in there. Put on our prop rod holder. Just clips in. Screw in our rubber baby buggy bumpers. And put them back in the original height. See if that lines it up with the new hood. We'll snap in the grommet for our hood holder upper. Prop rod as you fancy people call it. Just slides in there and twists around. We flip it into the clip we put in earlier. I'll put a splash shield in. Got a couple Christmas trees that hold it into the subframe. And one that holds it into the frame rail. Actually two. The other one will be bolted in later with the other splash shield. We can unbolt our trans mount from the front of the engine. And we'll break our nut loose for our battery cable. We're going to put our original ground cable back in here. Also provided by Scott's Grand Am Emporium. I'd like to thank them for sponsoring this video. They can't be found online. They're invite only. So, you gotta know a guy. Tighten the cable down. With our torque wrench. Now we can slide our trans mount back in there. This one was actually good. Pretty common for them to break. They're cheap. But I guess they're cheap for a reason. This one was still good, so we're going to leave it alone. 
and clip in our battery cables. And we can bolt the bottom of our trans mount down. We can get rid of this ridiculous battery cable they put on here. We just bolted it to the lifting eye for the engine in the back of the head. Conveniently located. We'll spin the bolt out of there. I don't know why they didn't use the other bolt. It was a lot easier to get to. Lost that in the pile. And then we'll put the bolt back in. And since we didn't drop it in Narnia, we can tighten it up. We can install the driver's side rubber baby buggy bumper for the hood. Tighten that down to manufacturer specs. Now we're ready to put our cooling assembly back up in here. It slides up from the bottom. There's a couple little brackets on the top that slide into the tabs on the radiator. Hope we can manage not to get everything stuck on everything else. Hoses, lines, and a few wires. We'll be able to slide it up here. Get those pins on the top of the radiator lined up on their brackets. I do leave those loose so we can line them up a little easier. We'll hold the radiator up there. Put the piece across the bottom, which also holds the bottom of the radiator. Rubber mounts sit on it. I get my hand out of there. Now we're ready to bolt that lower piece up to the subframe. Once we tighten that up, we'll hold everything in place. We can tighten up our brackets on the top and start clipping in all the wires for our radiator. The cooling fan, actually. Put our lower radiator hose on. We'll let that spring clamp live to see another day. Put our radiator hose on our overflow bottle. One more on the overflow bottle. Slide those spring clamps up into place. And then we'll put the upper radiator hose on. We're going with the regular clamp on here because these have a tendency to leak. As much as the experts of the internet love spring clamps, I don't. I prefer not to have coolant leaking everywhere. So we're going with the old fashioned clamp. We can snap in our throttle cable and our cruise cable. It's a good thing manufacturers decided to make everything dry by wire so we don't have to spend these two minutes to put the throttle cables in. Instead, we have to worry about codes from accelerator pedals and yay, electronics. We'll bolt our ground wire in and we'll slide our bracket in here for our junction box. Bolt that down. And we'll slide the junction box in here. It's also the fuse box. We'll bolt our wires in there, clip in the rest. Plug in our vacuum line. And then close it up. Flip it over and slide it into its tabs. It is a junction box as well as a fuse box because some of the wires don't actually plug into it. They just plug into each other and then go on to other places. Slide it back into its bracket. And we can bolt our battery cable down. And we'll ground our wire to the frame rail. One that usually breaks, but made a liar out of me this time. That wiring harness goes up in the front. So we'll plug that into our headlight mounting panel. And we can bolt our headlight mounting panel on. We'll finish with that wiring harness that goes up on the other side, plugs into the overflow bottle for the low coolant sensor, and the cruise control unit. Tighten up our AC line to the condenser, and install our horns. We had those out of the way for the painting gnome. Plug in our horn, 
and we'll put our washer bottle up there. Plug in our washer line and all of our wires. There's a low level sensor on there. Bolt that in. So we can slide our baffle up there for our air box. If you're wondering what the point of this is, it's so that you don't hear the engine air rushing sound. Kind of quiets it down a little bit. If you like that sound, just take that thing out of there and you get to hear more engine noises. Of course, it also does keep water from getting into the intake. So if you plan on turning your Grand into a submarine, you might want to leave it in there. Slide the clip in for our cruise unit. Clamp our cruise unit in and plug it in. We can throw our battery tray in there. Bolt that down. Then we can throw our energy absorber up. Bolt it into our reinforcement. And we're going to throw our air box in. I know all of you are looking at that bracket, thinking it's really rusty. Well, it was the cleanest one Scott's Grand Am Emporium had, so we're going to go with it. Still holds everything in place. It'll be just fine. And if you did notice the rusty looking color on the new frame rail, that was cavity wax. I went along all the seams and hosed it down to get cavity wax to drip in there. Keep it from rusting. Think it'll start? Sure. Why don't you ever bet me anymore? The gnome stopped betting me a long time ago, not because he has any confidence in my work, but he is playing the odds. So I have lost that source of income. Now since it runs, we'll move it over back to its little corner and we'll throw the front end together. We'll slide our fender down in behind the rocker molding. Got to get it on one side of one bracket and the other side of another bracket. And then we can tighten it all up. We'll fill up our washer fluid. Make sure that washer bottle we got from Scott's Grand Am Emporium is actually holding water bolt in our fog light and plug it in. I ordered a pizza and as you guessed I didn't get a pizza so we're gonna make the pizza girl do some work. I'm gonna throw our non ram air hood on. Put it in. I'm putting it back in our old marks. We'll see how close that gets us. With all that measuring it should line up right? We don't have a hood latch in there, so we'll see if it sits and our gaps are right. And they are. So now we're gonna throw our hood latch in and hopefully it doesn't complicate things. There is quite a bit of adjustment, so it is kind of forgiving. That's why I like these cars. Now we'll fill up our cooling system. And it's ready to drive around, right into the paint booth. That's as far as we can go today. We're waiting on the painting gnomes to finish painting the parts. Then we can put this thing back together. So thank you for watching. We'll see you soon. <laughs> so next time we come back, we'll get this all finished up and I will answer the most asked question about a Grand Am and that's how do you repair the dashboard? We'll do all that next time.